Hugh Jackman. Hey, everyone. This is so weird. This, this goes against every theatrical instinct of my life. But I'm just going to turn away from everybody. In fact, I might just turn the whole thing around. Kevin, l let me just say, this is so awesome. But if you have any Australian friends, do not tell them about this because they will find it and what they're going to do to it late at night, it's not right. It's just not right. All right. I'm so, so happy to be here today. There are, there are so many things that make Kevin a success. But above all, he knows that to make a great movie, you need a great story. And I have one to share today that I think I might be uniquely qualified in telling. It's a Kevin Feige origin story. Don't worry, Mum and Dad, I'm not going back that far. It's okay. It's an I knew him when story. Because uh, I first met Kevin 25 years ago on what was for both of us our very first movie. He was the assistant to the producer, Lauren Schuller, who is here today. <laughs> By the way, if anyone wants to check it up, I want someone to check up. I don't know how many, but I think you must set a record, Lauren, for the amount of people who have worked for you, who have gone on to be leaders in this industry, and that is not a coincidence. You're a class act, me included, by the way. So anyway, he was the assistant to the producer. I'd been flown up to audition for X-Men, and I remember I was in LA at the time, and this stretch limousine pulled up at 5.30 in the morning. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And uh, even though I'm not actually getting to go into Disneyland, at least I'm going to arrive at the park in style. Um, so I get there, I get ushered into the director's office at lunch, only to find out then that the movie had already been shooting for like two days, I think, when I did that first audition. And you know when an actor says, I knew I wasn't going to get the part? Well, I really knew I wasn't going to get the part. In fact, everybody knew I wasn't going to get the part because there just wasn't a part to be had. Um, that's a long story. But I did my scene. As I left, Kevin was there, and he says, hey, man, I'm going to give you a lift to the airport. And I said, uh, Kevin, that's really, really sweet of you. You, you really don't have to do, do that. I, I really appreciate it, but, you know, I know I'm not getting a part. And he... And I was also thinking at the time, what happened to the stretch limousine? I really wanted to go back in that. <laughs> anyway, Kevin says, no, no, I'm going to take you. So we get in the car, we're just chatting, and then all of a sudden he pulls over at a restaurant, and he gets out, and I'm like, Kevin, this is not the airport. And he goes, no, uh, I'm not going to send you back on that plane without giving you some food. So anyway, now at this point, I know I'm not getting the part. Kevin knows I'm not getting the part. The waiter in the restaurant knows I'm not getting the part. But I'd flown, I'd been there from LA to Toronto uh, for, for this audition. Uh, it's going to be 11 hours flying for the day. So Kevin, he just insists, he says, I want to give you a steak. So we go in to this steakhouse and, you know, I'm an actor. It's free steak, I'm in, totally. <laughs> and I just remember thinking to myself, this is a class act. He does not have to do this. And whether I don't know whether you felt sorry for me or whatever, he took the time to take care of me, and I will never, ever forget it. Um, and then about five days later, all of a sudden, the part became available. Like, it really actually became available. Sorry, Dugray. Um, and I came back, and I auditioned, and spoiler alert, I got the part. <coughs> and as, as we made the film, Kevin actually became a friend. Uh, even way back then, I knew he was kind. He was trustworthy, no matter what, he was going to have my back. And I, I just figured this guy's never going to make it in showbiz. But, <laughs> but I'd never read anything. I'd never read an X-Men comic at the time. When I got the part, he would slip me comic books. We'd hang out in his office. It was wall-to-wall -wall toys. There was so much there, and he showed me everything. There was no merch, because there was no merch on the movie. It was just literally toys from his own collection. And anyway, from those days of a free steak, comic book, toys, here we are. It's 25 years later, and this is kind of a full circle moment. So I was thinking, how can I, is there any way I can show my affection for this man today, apart from saying a few words here? And then the idea came to me. So hang on one sec. Kevin, I got you this uh, gift certificate to Mastro Steakhouse. <laughs> oh, wait, this is not just any gift certificate. This is a full $15 gift certificate. <laughs> Ballot on Tuesdays between 3 and 3.30. Don't cry. It's okay. And I honestly would go with you, but I'm kind of like a massive movie star now. It wouldn't look good for me, so... I just can't. So, 
But one other thing, Kev, I really want to say this, and I mean this. Ever since I've known you, you have a gift, many, many gifts, but you have an, a unique and extraordinary talent of making each project feel like it's the most exciting movie in the world. You make the best movie possible at every turn. You are generous, you are thoughtful, and you are like a Jedi, man. It's the mark of a great producer. It's why we are all here, gathered here, to celebrate your incredible legacy and the cinematic universe you have built over 16 years and counting. Congratulations, Kevin Feige. <laughs>